My father was a big part of my, my life growing up. He was really a very dedicated man to his family. He started showing signs of Parkinson's um, when he was in his late 50s, early 60s, in 89. Everybody was asking us if he had had a stroke because the way he was carrying his arm. He passed away at the age of 68 from complications involving Parkinson's. I was running on the treadmill and my thumbs would start to go up and down. Then I started to see some things in the mirror in the morning that kind of looked like my, my dad, kind of the, the long face. I started going to different doctors to find out because my shoulder was all so tight, so I thought I, had, I might have had a pinched nerve. But I knew what was going on all along. I was just looking for somebody to tell me no. Mark had gotten very mean and angry. I couldn't work out the way I had been. I couldn't run anymore. It's like walking into a burning house and know what's gonna happen once you get into that burning house. It, it was the same type of, of uh, feeling. Parkinson's disease is a very complicated disease. It has both motor and non-motor features associated with it, and both of those can be uh, quite problematic and really affect the quality of life of these patients and also affect their caregivers. What we know of Parkinson's disease is that the disease gets worse year over year. I don't know if Mark would have been walking six months ago. He was getting to that point that everything was just difficult. There was one day where I couldn't even hardly get out of bed because I was in, in such pain and um, I had to, to actually crawl to the phone to, to make a phone call. Mark I've actually been seeing since my first year at St. Luke's, six years ago. He presented with Parkinson's disease and his disease process was definitely progressing. So a lot of the things that he enjoyed doing became more difficult for him. He is somebody who developed these, you know, fluctuations with the medication where it wasn't consistently working. I was taking 23 pills a day. We know that you take increasing doses of medications, and despite that, your level of function becomes progressively worse. When the disease becomes more complicated, we have the advanced therapies, the latest things that are on the market, you know, this new DBS device, but also, you know, the, the latest medications that have been approved. We participate in clinical trials, so a lot of times we can offer things to our patients that aren't even available on the market yet. The conversation came up about doing deep brain stimulation. A lot of people don't know about it, and so they don't get the treatment that they could have that could have this profound effect. So when I saw Mark, I was very anxious to help him. We moved him through the process towards surgery fairly quickly. After we got the MRIs and, and then they opened up the surgery, we set the dates and then it was the rest is history. The surgery was just a lifesaver. He had made the comment to me that this was, I'm sorry. <laughs> he had finally woke up and it wasn't in pain. And that's, that's a huge improvement. After they activated the device, I was back at work uh, a week later, so. He's like, this is great. And he's doing exercises that he couldn't do before. He's engaging in things that he couldn't do before. He's doing his work without feeling so stressed about it. We were already Xing off med medications that I wouldn't need to take. You know, that's, that's one of those moments where you say, okay, not only am I helping a little tremor or a little slowness, but this is allowing Mark to, you know, engage with his family and do activities that are important to him. My stepdaughter just got married um, a week ago. She surprised me with a stepfather-daughter dance. I'm a little sentimental, but that was something that was very touching and very, and there's no way, like I said, that I could have done done that with her four or five months ago, so. For me personally, Parkinson's disease has touched my family. My grandfather had Parkinson's disease. 
I have an aunt who passed away from Parkinson's disease, and I have another uncle who has Parkinson's disease. So it's a very personal thing for me. I think when you have that open communication that you're not just going to deal with one symptom, you're not just going to look at their tremor, but you're going to look at everything. But part of that is the relationships. You know, it, it is, you, you're going to see these people, you know, every few months for the rest of their lives. And each time you get the opportunity to try to improve something. St. Luke's has, did such a phenomenal job. The, the surgeon was wonderful, the staff was wonderful. St. Luke's and, and the doctors, um, especially Dr. Staffers, are very open, very honest. We're willing to work with people based on their needs, uh, their desires, and, and how they want their disease approached. What I've been able to do after the surgery has is, is just been unbelievable for me and, and the people I work out with. We're treating people here. We're treating family members, we're treating loved ones. That's something that is not lost on me whatsoever. It's something that's important to me and it's important to all of us here at St. Luke's who perform this surgery and interact with the patients and family members.